Morse Code Bay is located within the Savannah River site in southern South Carolina. The Savannah River site has been a protected area since the 1950s as part of a government nuclear research area. Welcome to another edition of the Carolina Bay of the Day, where we study the secondary impacts made by the glacier ice boulders that were ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet. There is a link to the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth by Michael Davies in the description of the video. This satellite image shows the Savannah River which divides Georgia from South Carolina. Morse Code Bay is located in South Carolina, 32 kilometers or 20 miles southeast of Augusta, Georgia. According to a government website, the Savannah River site was constructed during the early 1950s to produce the materials used in the fabrication of nuclear weapons, primarily tritium and plutonium-239, in support of the U.S. defense programs. Five reactors were built to produce these materials. There are also a number of support facilities including two chemical separation plants, a heavy water extraction plant, a nuclear fuel and target fabrication facility, a tritium extraction facility, and waste management facilities. There's a link to the website in the video description. The location identified as Morse Code Bay is situated adjacent to another somewhat smaller depression. The origin of the Morse code name is not known, but perhaps it was derived from the dot-dot presentation of the two side-by-side -side depressions. Two dots represent the letter I in Morse code. The University of Georgia hosts the Savannah River Ecology Laboratory, which has conducted research at numerous bays across the Savannah River site, including Morse Code Bay. The shape of this base correlates well to what Michael Davies calls the Bay South archetype. These bays, with guitar pick shape, are usually found on inclined terrain. The morphology of this base originates from movement of the terrain downhill during viscous relaxation after the emplacement of the base. Liquefied soil flows more readily into the steeper gradient of the impact cavity even as the whole terrain slides downhill. The Guide to the Reptiles and Amphibians of the Savannah River site by Whit Gibbons and Raymond Semlich gives the following description of Morse Code Bay. This Carolina Bay is approximately 2 hectares in area, has a maximum water depth of half a meter, and usually dries each summer. The bay is open and vegetation such as Sirpus, Juncus, and Cephalanthus covers the basin. It is surrounded by pine plantations interspersed with pockets of mixed hardwoods. The description of the video has a link to this book. This is a comparison of the old LiDAR image on the left and the new LiDAR image on the right. The new LiDAR images penetrate the vegetation better and we can see the roads and ground structures more clearly. A transect across both bays indicates that the bay floor is at 44.5 meters above sea level and the bay rims are 1.5 meters higher. It is difficult to estimate the angle of impact for small Carolina bays because the formation of the bays is affected by aerodynamic resistance during re-entry from a suborbital space flight, and the conditions of the terrain have a proportionally bigger effect on the deformation of the bays. In 1952, William Proudy showed that the ellipticity for a smaller bays is more variable than for larger bays. Morse Code Bay is located 1,190 kilometers from Saginaw Bay, which is assumed to be the point from where the ice pieces that made the base were launched. Using ballistic equations, we calculate that the impact velocity was 3.53 kilometers per second. The time of flight was 6.84 minutes and the trajectory height was 207 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The impact energy was equivalent to 45.8 kilotons of TNT, which would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 6.59. Exploration of the Carolina base can take you to unexpected places. I did not expect that Morse Code Bay was the site of a nuclear research facility. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina base and the Nebraska rainwater basins. I will continue to examine the Carolina Bays one bay at a time. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays.